Hey everybody, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here, and in this video, we are spraying paint on my 32 Ford. Just kidding, that's not my 32 Ford. This is my 32 Ford. When we left off in the last video on the 32, I was body working where the frame splices happened. This, this part of the frame and this part of the frame are from two different cars. So we had a splice here, as well as the frame horns were originally bobbed on this chassis and we welded new ones on. So we did a little bit of body work where that splice happened and just a couple little spots that needed some touch-ups. I finished off doing the body work without you guys. I hope you're okay with that. If not, please let me know and in the future I will do all the body work videos. But uh, it was basically, I just kept doing the same thing that I did on the last video, only I flipped the chassis upside down and did the underneath. So we are ready to spray. Before we spray any paint, we are going to spray some polyester surfacer. So, I was always kind of referring this to or referring to this as slick sand. Slick sand is just a brand name, but uh, polyester surfacer is a really heavy, high build primer. It's almost like basically spray on body filler. And uh, the reason I was calling it slick sand is because I thought I had slick sand, but I don't. It's a uh, USC Eliminator high build polyester primer surfacer. I had a, I used to have a 63 Vespa and I traded, it was a project Vespa, basically just a shell with random parts and boxes. And I traded it to one of the guys at the auto body supply shop for a whole bunch of poly uh, primer, polyester surfacer, body filler. Everything was all supposed to go on brown sugar, my 72 Ford Crew Cab, but uh, we haven't got that far yet. So we're gonna use it on this instead. And basically the concept of the spray on body filler is to just fill in, there's a couple like rust pits in here, rust pitting, uh, sand scratches in our body filler. This is finished to 80 grit. So it'll fill in the 80 grit scratches. And from there we can block sand it and have a nice smooth finish to put our regular primer, and our epoxy primer and paint over. So I think we're going to roll this outside, blow the ever-living snot out of it, give it a wipe down, and spray it. Let's do it. So while the primer surfacer is over there on the paint shaker, shaking up, we're gonna wipe this thing down. We're gonna use just some regular wax and grease remover. Uh, the way I was always taught to do this is you use one paper towel for app, like putting it on and then another one for drying it. I don't know how crucial that is, but that's the way I've always done it and it's always worked, so I'm gonna keep doing it that way. What this does is wipes off all the like the oils from your hands, from touching it, any contaminants or anything that, that have gotten on it while it was in here and just gives it a nice clean, whoop, I think we got a lot there, just a nice clean surface. So wipe on, wipe off, just like that uh, karate movie. You guys remember that movie, right? Had the guy in it. I don't know what it's called. So you see these like grinder marks down in here and these little rust pits in here. That's what we are trying to fill. That's what our objective is, is to fill all that stuff and then we can block sand it out and it's nice and smooth. Those areas and that area you're not really going to see when the car is all together. The fender goes right there. 
but this whole area in here is completely visible on a 32 Ford. The body bolts down here and the running board bolts up here and this is the filler piece in between. So definitely visible. This is the part we want to make really nice. Much like Elvis, this stuff is all shook up. So we're going to mix it up now. The ratio for this is for one quart of primer surfacer, you need half an ounce of hardener. How do I know that? It says right there on the can. Always read your cans. So this is one quart. We're going to mix up one quart. It'll probably use all of it. So we'll go up to one on there. Add, this is two ounces and we only need half an ounce. So we'll use, a, you know, about a quarter of that. If you're a little bit over, a little bit under, it'll, it'll be fine. And then uh, we'll spray it on the car. The pour. It's dribbling down my fingers. I don't know why they don't make paint cans that are easy to pour out of. Well, I guess you can buy the things that go on the top, but I don't have one of those. I don't do enough paint and body work to buy all the specialized tools. Okay, add some hardener. So, oh, look at that, it's labeled on the side. I think we just need to go down to the next, the next little mark on there. We started at half, now we're at one, so I guess that means half, it's weird. You think they put that the other way so that the two was at the top, but. Uh, I don't have a stir stick, but I've got this piece of metal. It'll work fine. So we're gonna stir this up nice and thorough. Stirring thorough is important. When you think you've stirred enough, stir a little bit more. You want the stuff nice and mixed so that you get dry, even dry coverage. Put that over top. That should be okay. Let's go put it in our paint can. Paint gun, paint gun. So this paint gun that we're using, this is a SATA, and it's a special gun that has two purposes, polyester surfacer or metal flake. You can spray metal flake with this gun, as you can see by the little bit of metal flake on the top. And really the only difference is this tip right here. This is a 2.4 millimeter tip. When you pull that trigger back, look at that thing. That's like a fire hose. So you need the big tip like that for spraying the surfacer because it is so thick or if you're using it for metal flake because metal flake is actual little chunks of metal that you spray out. So let's dump this in and then we'll go to the paint booth which is outside. I got my neighbor Lewis to move his car so it's out of the overspray zone. That doesn't go there, that goes there. And we'll go spray. Psh, psh. Okay, we are ready to spray. Now the first thing you should do when you're spraying is put your respirator on. I'm an idiot, I don't have a respirator. I lost it. Shannon thinks that it broke the last time we were painting, which was when we painted the engine bay in her Comet, and then I threw it in the garbage. Probably what happened, I don't remember. What I do know is yesterday when I went to Rondex to get some of this supplies, that was on the drive there, I was like, get a respirator, get a respirator, get a respirator, get a respirator. I didn't get a respirator, totally forgot about it. But I'm gonna take a gamble that we can spray this and I won't die today. If I was spraying this stuff every single day for like 40 years, definitely have a respirator. But I spray this stuff for like 10 minutes, maybe once every couple years. So I'll just hold my breath and hope for the best. We're gonna start by just putting light coats on our body filler area only. We'll go all the way around, kind of let it tack up. Oh nice, the sun's coming out. Let it tack up and then we'll do the whole thing. Flip the rotisserie, do the other side.
We're going to have to go mix up some more. We've got one thorough coat on all the bare metal and two coats on all the body filled areas. Well, that's it. Now we just have to let it dry. I, I think I gave it about four coats and then I gave the actual part that you see, I think about six coats and I, I put it on pretty heavy to fill all those pits. So you gotta let this dry. The longer it dries, the better. And then you can block sand it out and then move on to primer and paint. We'll have to do that later. I'm gonna clean my paint gun out. And then, what are we gonna do now, I guess? I know what to do. Yesterday, my friend Brian sent me a marketplace ad for a 26 or 27 Model T Roadster. It looks like the front half of a Touring, but piled all around it is a whole bunch of 32 Ford Fenders. So I'm not really too interested in the Model T Roadster. It'd be a cool project, but I got my hands full with enough projects. But I want to go look at it to look at these fenders to see if they are in better shape than my fenders. And kind of my plan is, the guy's asking 1500 bucks for everything. So my plan is go look at it, maybe offer him a thousand bucks, get everything, bring it home, keep the fenders, and then put the body back up for sale for a thousand bucks. Free fenders. That's how you build cars on a budget. So we'll clean the paint gun out and then we'll fire up the truck and go take a look at this Model T project. This guy's in Langford, which is about a 15 minute drive from here. Yeah, these fenders aren't much better than what I've got. Sometimes it's just better to know when to let go of it. Well, those fenders are not any better than what I have, so there's no advantage of buying them. It was priced cheap enough that I probably could have bought that whole set up and sold the body and the fender separate and made a little bit of money on it but i have so many irons in the fire right now i have so many fires with so many irons overloading them so we'll let somebody else do that we'll just keep focusing on on what we've got but it was definitely a good buy for somebody that wants to build a model t we're gonna get some burritos and go back to the shop We're back at the shop now, all full of burrito. 
This is still a little too fresh to sand, so I think we'll just let it sit for you know a few days, and then we'll sand it and continue on with this video. In the meantime, we're just gonna spend the rest of the day messing around on Shannon's comment. So we'll see you in a few days. Good morning. It is, I think, like 7.30, 8 o'clock-ish, Sunday morning. I normally don't work on cars at all on Sundays. I'm in the shop six days a week, so I take Sundays off just to, you know, have a break. I don't want to get burnt out on them. But this morning, I woke up really early, and I'm just so stoked on this that I just, I had to come down and keep, keep going on it. So, Shannon and Doris are still sleeping. I'll probably stop when uh, they're ready to have breakfast and have breakfast. Until then, I'm gonna get as much sanded on this as I can. So we're gonna start with, this is some guide coat. This is like a charcoal powder that you, you just rub on it like that. And that gives you an idea of what you've sanded and what you still need to sand. As you're sanding that, and it starts to smooth out, it will come off. If you have any low spots or sanding scratches that are still there, there will still be black charcoal in them. So you can, you can see what you're doing. It gives you a guide. That's why it's called guide coat. Just got a little Princess Auto sanding block. These blocks are cheap. They're like, I think I paid three or four bucks for it, but they're, they're really nice. I really like them. And we're gonna start with some 180 grit. Normally, like if this was a car, I would start with 120 and a long board, but because it's just a chassis and this is the only crucial part right here, I'm just gonna start with 180 and we'll probably take it to about 320 grit. So we'll do 180 grit, blow the dust off, re-guide coat it, drop down to 220 grit, block it, re-guide coat it, drop down to 320, block it one more time, and then it should be ready for paint. So let's see how much we can get done. So here you can really see the guide coat at work. I've just sanded a little bit here with the block. And as you can see, we still have some dark spots there. That means that that area is not sanded enough. You just want to sand it until all those little black dots disappear or until you hit bare metal, whichever comes first. It's kind of same concept as when we were putting body filler on. When you hit bare metal, that's, you know, don't go any further than that because the bare metal is not going to sand anymore, but all the product around it is going to continue to sand as you're blocking. And you're going to create, the metal's already the, the high spot and you're just going to create a big low spot all the way around it. So when you hit bare metal, stop. I've got this side mostly blocked out. I still have to flip it up and do the underside, but everything has come out really nice, except for this spot right here, which I was a little bit concerned about. There was some really heavy pinning there, and I really put the surfacer on heavy, but not enough, so that's no big deal, though. We can come back and just touch these little bits up with some putty and it'll be a-okay. This area turned out 
really nice. There's a couple little pinholes in the body filler right here, but I don't care because the fender's gonna be there and nobody will ever see that. So this, this is so overkill for what I'm doing. This is completely unnecessary, but here we are. So, so I think I've come up with a name for this car, the Chicken Salad 32, because this whole project has been taking chicken shit and turning it into chicken salad. So I think I'm gonna take a break for the rest of the day. My sun has disappeared and it's turning into rain clouds and it is breakfast time. I'm hungry, so blow this off and go make some breakfast. So it is Wednesday evening right now. I'm sanding away on this thing and Shannon has just got home from work. And she has a package for her. There's a package. Let's go open it up and see what's in there. So this is from Daniel and Ruby at Ruby Ruby Doobie Clothing Ruby in Doobie. Colorado. And they sent this to Shannon. Thank you. I'm not touching any of it because I'm all dusty. <gasps> cool. Blankets. Blankets? I don't know, open it up. Whoa! 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 Okay, you guys see this. That is... Get out of here. So if you guys haven't noticed yet, Shannon and I are expecting Yeah. Doris is going to have a sibling. And we just got the coolest baby blanket in town. Go hold it up. And... Wow, that is so cool. Oh, cool. I don't even know what to say. What's this no, thing? I don't know. I don't Open know. that up. I want to touch it, but. I think it's a crib bumper. A crib bumper? I don't know what that is. It goes around the crib so the baby doesn't smash their little head. Wow! What's that, Doris? That's so wow. cool. That is amazing. Doris, don't eat it. Doris loves it. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, thank thank you, you so much. Yeah, thank you guys so much. That's incredible. Yeah. I was not expecting this at all. This no. is mind blowing. This is fantastic. So. Baby's first blanket. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Daniel and Ruby. Go check out Ruby Doobie Clothing. They got an online store. So tell them that LG, the LG baby sent you. Yeah. So, all right, back to sanding. <laughs> thanks again, you guys. That's incredible. Wow. That's so cool. We've got this other side blocked out and it's got some pretty bad pitting as well that did not come out. Plus we've got a little bit of a low spot right here. And the reason I know this is a low spot is because we can still see a little bit of the guide coat and the, the texture or the orange peel as they call it from spraying. And we broke through to bare metal just about all the way around it. So we know we can't continue sanding this out. So what we're gonna do now is mix up a little bit of putty Putty is basically the same concept as the body filler that we were using earlier. It's just a little bit thinner. It's a little lighter duty. It sands a little easier. It doesn't build as heavy and it's perfect for filling this kind of stuff right here. Otherwise, everything else seems okay on this side or where we spliced up here came out really nice, where we spliced back here came out really nice. The top, I mean, obviously we've got some good pitting in the top, but I'm not gonna worry about that because the body's gonna get bolted down to there. So what you guys are seeing right now, that's the last time anybody will ever see this. So let's not waste our effort making 
that part perfect, let's put our time into this area that's actually visible and will be seen. This is where, when I'm getting in the car, this is where my boots are gonna keep kicking it. So this is our putty here. It usually comes in like a littler tube rather than uh, the big jugs, the one gallon jugs. Ah, this hasn't been opened in a while. There we go. She's thick, the stuff might have sat. It's a couple years old. That's probably pretty good. I prefer to mix like two batches of body filler that I know I'm going to use rather than one big batch that I might not use all of it. It mixes up exactly the same as body filler. Just like so. We'll get this all mixed up and then it, you apply it on the car exactly the same. So we'll mix it up and then go back over to the, the frame. Okay, we've got a couple spots there. A little bit there. Probably just blend this right in, like so. And I think that was it on this side. Oh, a little bit right there. Couple pinholes. And now that we're getting in there, <laughs> can find all these spots. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. Now it's good. Let's go to the other side. But it's Sunday morning and we're finally ready to spray this. I saved you guys the, the boring details of dropping from 220 to 320 to 400 and everything because it was the exact same thing I was doing just in a different grid of sandpaper. So from the start of this video today, it's been nine days so far. This stuff takes a long time. Uh, that noise in the background is the primer sealer mixing up on the paint shaker. We're going to spray this in sealer and what that does is seals everything in that's already there and also gives it a nice even coat so that when the paint goes on all the like everything underneath is one solid even color and that just helps it lay out a little more evenly uh, we've got the front suspension I just sanded it really quick not getting super carried away with that we're just gonna hang that off the forklift and the rear suspension, same thing. I didn't get super carried away. Just buzzed it down with the DA. So we will seal and paint that black as well. Uh, the front end, like I just said, I'm gonna hang off the forklift. The rear suspension, I'm not quite sure what my plan is with that yet, but we'll figure that out. So we're gonna roll everything outside, give it one final blow, dust all the, the blow off, blow all the dust off. You know what I'm trying to say. Give it a wipe down with some wax and grease remover and start spray in our sealer. We've got everything all set up outside. I've wet the, the ground down to try to keep the dust to a minimum. Most of the dust is my own dust, so it's kind of kind of my own fault. Somebody told me one time doing paint and body is Half the time you're just creating dust and the other half of the time you're trying to eliminate the dust, which is very true. Got a respirator, finally. They were actually, uh, they had 
oops, uh-oh, uh-oh. They had respirators in stock, but the, the filters, which I just broke off, they did not have in stock, but I had filters from my last respirator. Uh, you know what, we should probably test fit this before we mix all our paint up. Actually, we not, might not be too bad. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay, we're good. It's nothing more stressful than mixing up paint and then you get out to, to go spray and find out that you forgot something or missed something. And So this is Nason Full Poxy Epoxy Primer Sealer. This stuff mixes two to one, meaning two parts primer to one part activator. It doesn't use any reducer. Some primers do. Every paint is different, so always read the directions. So many people experiment with their own, oh, I'll put a little bit of this and a little bit of that, which I don't know. I mean, that works to an extent, but at the same time, there's like, like these paint companies paid chemical engineers millions of dollars to figure this out. So who am I to question it? So two to one ratio. If you use an actual mixing cup, it will have right on it. There we have two to one, meaning if you wanted, say you filled this up to the seven under the two line, then you move over to the one line and fill it up to the seven and that gives you two to one. If you were to do just regular math, you know, you'd fill it up to the four and then add six and that gives you one part, two parts to one part. Does that make sense? Uh, just follow the thing. It's easy. Uh, how much are we going to need? Probably quite a bit. We don't have a lot of this left. We'll probably actually end up using all of it. So I'm going to use the one to one ratio and just go to the four and then the six because that way we get the maximum usage out of this container. Oh, I guess I should actually watch the lines here. Okay, there's four parts primer in there. Two. Two parts hardener. So we'll mix this up really good pour it in our paint gun and then go out and spray it. You know, I still haven't got a paint stick. I keep forgetting to get one. So this'll work. I'm sure there's some sort of contaminants on there that are probably not good for this, but whatever, it's just an old hot rod. It'll be fine. Remember that orange spray paint that was on there? No matter how this turns out, it's gonna be better than that. And that's all I want. I just want better than what it was. Okay, let's uh, get a little piece of paper towel to set this on. Got a paint filter here. So that'll go in there. That way if any chunkies that fell off the edge of the can, they don't end up in here. Pouring it in here like this also well, you know what? We just filled right up. We probably could have done right to the, like the actual two to one side because we can't fit a whole thing in here anyways. All right, let's, let's go spray this. Okay, I hope you can hear me with this respirator. You probably can't. I'm going to start with the wishbones back here. That way if uh, anything gets weird, it's on the part that you don't really see. We're just going to give it one light coat to start. And then once it tacks up a bit, you can go a little heavier.
Our epoxy is all sprayed, or our sealer, whatever you want to call it. Now we can move on to the paint. I just took this off the paint shaker. It's been on there for quite a while, rattling around. So this is Imron paint. It's a industrial paint, very highly recommended by Jim at Rondex where I get my paint and body stuff done. Jim and Buck, great people. So my, my roaster chassis I painted with this industrial paint called Endura. I painted it 13 years ago and it still looks amazing to this day. Uh, Jim says this is just as good as Endura. So the mixing ratio on this, as explained to me by Buck, is eight to one to one, which is eight parts paint, one part activator, which is what hardens it, to one part reducer. The reducer, all it does is makes it thin enough that it will spray out the gun and then it just evaporates afterwards. So Emron also, Buck was saying, takes a really long time to dry and cure. So he gave me a little bit of, this is called accelerator. I've never used this before. He said just add a couple drops to it and it makes it harden considerably faster. So we got another mix cup here. Let's mix up our eight to one to one. Just like before, on our mix cup here, we have a eight to one section, so we can just follow that again. Just like before. Oh yeah, look at that. It's not gonna dry that color, it's gonna be, this is semi-gloss black. All right, here comes the pour. So, there's our eight parts. We're probably, just like the uh, sealer, gonna have to mix up a couple. I ended up filling my gun four times to do everything that we had there. I used all, everything that was left in that jug. Okay, so. Oh man, this stuff's thick. Thick with two C's. Okay, activator is done. Reducer, I'm gonna finish off this can before we open up that can. And then our accelerator. Sure, that seems like enough. Okay, need to find a new stir stick. All right, here we go. So in the old days when I used to do paint and body all the time, the rule was when you're done spraying your sealer, you come back into the mix room, you clean your gun out, you mix up your new paint, have smoke and a coffee, and then you're good to go again. So I've already cleaned my gun out. I don't smoke anymore, and I've had a lot of coffee already today. So we're having a bubbly instead. That is mixed up. Let's grab a, <coughs> excuse me. Let's grab a new paint filter. And fill our gun. Perfect. So that filled it right full. Maybe there's a science behind why they stop them at the certain points. Even though you can fill this considerably more, the ratios they have on there works out to a perfect full pot in the paint gun. All right, I'm gonna finish my bubbly. And then we'll spray some paint. So just like before, I'm just gonna give the first coat kind of a little dusting just to kind of let it tack up a little bit. And then you can go heavy on the second coat.
That's it, clean up time. Just finished cleaning everything up, clean my paint gun out. This has had a couple minutes to dry and man, it laid out just like glass. I am so happy with this. The only thing I think I would change if I was to do this again is this is gonna dry semi-gloss black. Seeing it like this, I kinda wish I went gloss black. But that's not a big deal. I mean, it's not. most of it's not gonna be seen anyways, but our Pits are completely gone. It laid out really nice and straight. Remember how janky this used to look before? Remember when we first took this car apart and we were down to just the bare frame when it was still orange and that front clip didn't line up properly and it had no frame horns on the back and broken cross member. It was just an absolute disaster. And look at it now. You know how much money it costs to do that? Maybe I think I paid 500 bucks to get it sandblasted. And uh, we got a couple, couple bucks in some welding supplies and some paint supplies. And here we are. It was 90% just my time. This stuff over here that was not sandblasted, it still turned out so nice. There's still a little bit of pitting in the axle. That was to be expected because we didn't spray any like polyester surface or anything but it doesn't matter because when it's in the car you won't see it at all these wishbones turned out beautiful rear suspension same thing it turned out great i am so happy with this just tickled tickled pink tickled black man i just, i can't stop staring at this thing it turned out so great I think we're going to call this video here. In the next video, we are going to put the front axle back under, put the rear suspension back under, put the engine back in, and get this thing on wheels again. I hope you guys learned something watching this video, even if it was just a little bit. That's awesome. That's my whole point with this, is just to show everybody you know, how to build a hot rod, how you can build a hot rod at home. If you want to support this channel and say thanks, please check out lgspeedcustom.com where we got lots of LG Speed and Custom shirts and stickers as well as hot rod parts. These motor mounts that are in here, those are available on the website. The shock tabs, actually we don't have any of my LG shock tabs on this car yet, but there will be one day, but they're on the website as well. So yeah, go check that out. Uh, thanks to the Cavaleros, local Victoria surf band for the music in this video. And thanks to Jim and Buck at Rondex. Jim mixed up the paint. Buck, he explained all the, the technical part of it on how to lay it out and stuff. Crystal at Rondex got me my respirator, so that was awesome. And yeah, we will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.